the moon. It's our nearest neighbor in space, and data we gather from its features can tell us a lot about the rest of our solar system. And through the eyes of the LRO spacecraft, we can explore the lunar surface in all new ways, in fascinating detail. Our tour begins on the western border, where the near side of the moon meets the far side. The enormous feature is a lunar crater, and it's known as the Oriental Basin. Here, LRO's terrain map combines the surface gravity measurements from the GRAIL mission. This data reveals structure of the lunar crust beneath the surface, giving us a window into the geologic features of the moon's interior. Our next location receives little direct sunlight and has some of the coldest recorded temperatures in the solar system, the South Pole. The highlighted spots signify potential water ice based on temperature readings from LRO's diviner instrument and reflectance from its laser altimeter LOLA. LOLA also allows us to peer into the darkness of Shackleton Crater by bringing us its digital elevation model. It's 21 kilometers wide and 4 kilometers deep, but it pales in comparison to the largest known impact crater in the Earth-Moon system the South Pole Aiken Basin. Sitting on the far side, it's 2,500 kilometers across and 13 kilometers deep. We don't yet know exactly how old the basin is, but it was first seen in the 1960s by spacecraft flying around the far side. As much as we use LRO data to investigate areas we can't see from Earth, we also probe familiar territory on the lunar near side to bring back images with an all-new level of detail. This is Tycho Crater. It's around 100 million years old. Here, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera captures the central peak with a 100-meter wide boulder at the summit, the origins of which are still a mystery. Continuing across the moon's near side, we will arrive in an area ripe for future exploration due to the diversity of impact and volcanic materials. It features a prominent crater so bright it's not only visible through telescopes, but also to the naked eye. Welcome to the Aristarchus Plateau. Here, infrared shows the mineral pyroxene in orange and a splash of plagioclase in blue from Aristarchus Crater. This region can tell us a lot about the rich volcanic history of the moon. As much as we study the moon looking for sites to visit, we also look back at places we've already been. This is because the new data that LRO is gathering helps us reinterpret the geology of familiar places, giving scientists a better understanding of the sequence of events in early lunar history. Here, we descend to the Apollo 17 landing site the Taurus Mitro Valley, which is deeper than the Grand Canyon. The path the astronauts took over the course of three days is shown. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera is even able to capture a view of the bottom half of the Apollo 17 lunar lander, which still sits on the surface, as well as the rover vehicle. These images help preserve our accomplishment of human exploration on the moon's surface. Moving onward, we make our way to our final destination. This location contains regions that exist in permanent shadow, as well as ones that bask in nearly perpetual light. It's the North Pole. Detailed terrain measurements by LOLA allow scientists to model sunlight and shadow at the poles over decades and centuries. Sunlit peaks and crater rims here may be ideal locations for generating solar power for future expeditions to the moon. This updated visualization of the lunar landscape stands as a testament to the functionality and abilities of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft. And as the mission continues to gather data, it will provide us with many more opportunities to take a tour of our moon.